We've got some hey, I'm Luis. Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening you to the Content is Profit podcast. And we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn how to turn that content into profit, just go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. And today, Woo-hoo. I'm excited for this conversation. The role of creativity when unlocking your brand. This is going to be very, very exciting. I love anything that has to do with creativity, curiosity, all that world. I know. So this is going to be exciting. And, well, I don't want to spoil some surprises. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll So, just wait. fun fact before we get started with the sponsors and all the awesome things. We I was on a call this morning, and Fonzie walks behind me and says hi to the people that were on the call. And they're like, who's that? And we're like, well, that's Fonzie. That's the other Luis. Like, yeah, he's the thinker. He's a creative. And it's like, yeah, he lo- he does look like a thinker. He does look like a creative. So, it's if the, you're it's listening. It's the hair. It's the hair. <laughs> so if you if you're listening right now, go to the feed, go to the videos, and uh, actually let us know if Fonzie's actually the thinker. But with that said, Fonzie, do we have a sponsor today? Indeed, we do. Thank you so much for asking. You're welcome. And today's sponsor is your one and only the Biz Bros Let's with go. Content Momentum. And you might be asking yourself, what is Content Momentum? Well, if you produce a long form piece of content, just like this one that you're watching or listening to, and you need a modern media team to come in and help you turn that content into value packed bite sized assets. So then you can go and send them like little minions into the interwebs so they can help you get new clients. Then we want to help you out. Slide in the DMs at Biz Bros Co. on Facebook, on Instagram. Let's party. Let's, Let's do go. it. Thank you, Fonzie. And You're for welcome. those listening, guys, go ahead and follow the podcast in your favorite platform. Just hit that button, follow. And uh, also on social media because all the golden boulders from these interviews are there in bite sized, value packed assets, like Fonzie is saying. Oh, baby. That is right. Let's and go. please, or only ask if you find value in today's conversation. If today's conversation helps you move one step forward towards your goal, or it can help somebody else that you know move one step forward towards their goal, please, please share this episode with them. And don't forget to leave a five-star review. Thank you. Happy hump day. Today, we have a special friend here with us. We met him at the best event for podcasters, PodMax. The power of community is real. So real that he even picked us up for coffee when we were at Boise, Idaho and connected in real life. Yes, we have real life friends. That's for my wife. And for my girlfriend too. They think we have no friends. Either way, today's guest is one of the nicest people. You have the pleasure to meet he's also the host of the unlocking your world of creativity podcast where others see product he sees brands he has actually created launched and promoted more than 250 brands in health science and technology also he's a published author of five business books and many motivational journals impressive you know what's impressive is that he has done all this and he looks like he's just in his 30s Full of life. Please welcome the brand innovator, podcast host, and the friendliest man in Boise, Mark Stinson. <laughs> welcome, Mark. <laughs> uh, love it, love it, love it. Well, and uh, boy, to, uh, Boise is such a friendly town to be uh, even considered. At the top of the friendly list in Boise, Idaho. Boy, that's that's a recognition. <laughs> hey, Mark, you know how everybody, you know, in the ClickFunnels community, like, exhibit their Two Comma Club awards in the back? Yeah, We're going to yes. send you a friendliest man <laughs> in the world award. I love you can it. See, put it right there back and people know. You I know. love it. And I, I definitely can see side by side here on video that I need something on the wall. So, yes, I will take that plaque. I will take the trophy. Let's and, go. Uh, Cut this yeah, I, just, I just realized, uh, you know, if you have a tan wall, don't wear a tan shirt. <laughs> but anyway. We only see a floating head right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just yeah, saying. There you go. Hey, it, it has happened. Sometimes we have the green screen green and we wear green stuff and it's it, yeah, it's a mess yeah. but it, oh, it's yeah. all good mark just ahead. you are looking great man thank you so much for being here we're so excited and for well, those thanks for having me yeah of course and for those that are listening right Let, let's dive a little bit into who is mark stinson right like and and what happened to get where you are right now in your life 
Yeah. Well, uh, when you guys talk about content as profit, uh, you know, content is my whole life. I mean, I, it, it just pulses through my veins and it has from a very young age. So, you know, I enjoyed writing in school. I studied journalism in college, got a job as an ad agent at an ad agency during college. Uh, yeah. I was also a DJ at a, a R&B soul disco radio station in my hometown. Yeah. So we, we didn't even know what content was. We just knew it had a beat. And that's why I love your soundtrack. Uh, you know, it's got a beat. It's easy to dance to, and it uh, really pulses. So uh, that, that's how I began, you know, in terms of writing and content creation. I, I've written so much. You know, people say, you know, how do you get the, I guess, inspiration? Well, first of all, if you have a job and you have a deadline and you have a client who says, I need it by Thursday, well, then you're going to get it done. Uh, so there's a, <laughs> there's a little bit of that. But I think over time, I just said, look, there's so many ideas out there. Uh, you know, how do people organize those ideas? Are there, you know, ways that you can not look at a blank page and wonder, what am I, where do I start? How do yeah. I begin? Yeah. So I began this, this journey or this exploration of what are the tools and the methods you know, that can not just make you more creative, meaning you have these light bulb moments of ideas, but how can you execute these ideas? How can you capture them? How can you record, publish, produce, you know, exhibit, whatever it is your creative output would be? How can you get that done? And that's what I've enjoyed. Uh, that's that's a, awesome. I love it. Uh, and, you know, as you were mentioning that story, Mark, you in my head, I'm going through like, what a great moment to to put those ideas out there, right? There's so many channels. The The barrier of, of entry is very low as far as like tech goes. Like we could potentially do this from our phones today, right? And then there's- uh, Absolutely, it's uh, bizarre. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And and the fact that we could have a voice and, and share stories that can impact people, that's incredible. And you know, when when we go through, through your introduction and the conversation that we had at, at Boise that one time that, you know, we went for coffee, um, I wonder, like, is there- is there a framework that you followed, right? Like obviously through all your experience, through all this, like why, why do you publish? Like why do you have that itch, right? Because for us, when we started our, our business, I guess, entrepreneurship journey about almost six years ago now, uh, as in like our own Biz Bros company, right? We were like, well, we need to publish because people are telling us to publish and it's related to, to profit. And now that has been the thing that we've explored with the show and it's true, but it's like, it's attached to that, right? But then through the journey, we've discovered something really powerful happens when you put those thoughts into words and put it out into the world, right? We start like, hey, am I really backing this point up? Like, what is it? Like, why am I sharing these stories? Who am I serving? Who am I helping? And then all these things start to happen, right? And unfold in front of you. So for us, it, it has evolved, the, the the reason of why we published. I'm curious, like, uh, why or how did it start with you and your agency? And then has it evolved in a different way uh, along the way? Yeah, I, I think that uh, maybe I'll talk about it in three stages. The, the first was, can you articulate your service, you know, your, your capability or your approach and say, you know, call it an elevator pitch. But I mean, can you speak to what you really do? And I think I discovered over time all the, you know, capabilities presentations and 42 slides or, you know, uh, boards and pitches and all. But can you get it in a book, for example? Can you outline it in 10 chapters so that people can read it, understand it and grasp it? So that maybe that was my first motivation. Yeah. Uh, the second was, can you turn it into something that would be replicable? You know, that people would say it's not just you and not just your, your approach, but it's an idea. It's a way. And if you can give people this roadmap, and I often use the metaphor of constellations in the stars. Mm. Some people would look up in the sky and say, wow, there's billions of stars. Other people go, wow, look at that. If you connect those dots, it's called a Big Dipper. If you connect some other dots, it's called Taurus. You know, if you connect to my, so connecting the dots and making the models is what I began to, to really pursue because there's a lot of creative people that are, wow, you're really creative. Yeah. 
but can you connect the dots and create it as a model so people can use it and replicate it? Yeah. yeah. Then I guess I just go to the third thing, and that's you do. You you mentioned it, uh, Luis, that that you have this desire to share it. That you know, somebody asked me the other day, why would you put that in a book for other people to steal and copy? Well, why did they write recipe books? You know, <laughs> it's like you know, if you want to cook this at home, that's fine. But if you want to go to a nice restaurant, you know, they're going to make it even better. It's the same ingredients or it's the same process. But so I, I, I stopped worrying about giving it away. Uh, and if it attracts people to me and they want to work with me, fantastic. If they think they can do it themselves. Hey, I think that's great, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm loving this and I'm extremely curious, I think, for uh, for people that are listening right now, I feel like most people have a. Uh, a concept of creativity that I'm not gonna say is wrong, but I'm not gonna say either is right. Right? I feel like a lot of people think creativity is on the artistic side, like oh, I can draw, I can paint, I can do all these things. Right? Actually, I'm reading right now a book by the a company called IDEO, which they're talking about creativity more as a skill that everybody can develop. But I'm extremely curious to to know how do you think about creativity? What What is your personal definition for, for creativity? Yes, I totally agree. I said, look, you know, d designers, artists, writers, painters, sculptors, photographers, musicians, all, all of these people have an innate creativity that says, well, you really have a way of capturing a story, you know, in whatever medium you use. But then I got to tell you, and you, you mentioned my podcast. Thanks for the extra plug. Ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, what I've had a chance to do just in the podcast is interview. I think I'm on episode 80 or something like that. Let's go. But, you know, 80 experts in all of those fields. Uh, that's in addition to just the contacts and people I know and so forth. And I think to your point, uh, Fonzie, is that creativity is just a new or different way of looking mm. at the same thing everybody else looks at yeah. and sees it a little bit differently or says this is the way we used to look at it let's look at it from another angle and see if we can uh, get a new idea a new approach you know a new product concept and i gotta tell you one of the things and uh, you know uh, our friend uh, uh, ron cool asked me this question too. And, it, you know, and the answer was really, I get my ideas from the customer. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I, I don't even know if I've had an original idea. I go out to customers, whether informally or formally, in focus groups or, you know, in one-on-one -on -one market research interviews or just observing, you know, go yeah. to a coffee shop and watch people, how they're using various products. Yeah. And so I get ideas from the customer. And if they say, well, I know you think it's X, but the way I use it is really Y, <laughs> you know, then here's a new idea. And they gave it to you. Yeah. Wow. This aligns so much with, you know, what, what we're reading and what we're learning and what we're trying to implement in our business as well. I love that definition of creativity, right? It's a new or different way to look at things or problems, right? And you're saying you're learning these ideas from actually observing the clients, right? The people that actually interact with the product. And I think that is so important because especially right now where there's so many people diving into not only the online world, but like diving into entrepreneurship, right? I feel like it has grown the, the that factor of, I wanna be an entrepreneur, right? And people are starting more businesses. People are like, what problem can I solve? And they look back at their own problems and say, I can solve this one. And that is, That is great. I think that's a good starting point. But then they just go off of their own data, right? Like their own experience without actually tapping into, let's say, that creativity and look for other people, observe. And one of the first steps on the the IDEO uh, program, right, that, that, that I'm talking about, that book, um, is called Design Thinking. And the first mm -hmm. step is observation, right? Is empathy, observation. Let me just talk to the, the end user or observe how they use the product and I'm going to learn more things. And that way you start tapping into that creative mindset. Like you said, it's not just the artistic, the painting. Like a lawyer, 
can be creative, right? But I think a lot of people are afraid of tapping into creativity because I feel like creativity goes hand in hand with failure, right? To, to be fully creative, you need to fail multiple times, right? Like if, you, if you're trying to develop something, you need to make those mistakes so you can learn and then eventually get to your goal. Is that the, the view that you have on it? I'm, I'm curious. And why are people afraid of maybe stepping into that creative mode? Well, but one thing is we want the quick results. And so I want to get it right the first time and just launch it and go with it. But uh, I'm just going to take a highlighter or a freeze frame for a second on that word you use, observe. And uh, I can just tell you, look, it's the famous story of how Edison observed a thousand ways not to make a light bulb before he actually made it. Okay, that's yeah. famous. But let's take some of these other examples. You know, the scientist at the 3M Corporation who observed how those like burrs were sticking on his socks when he w walked through the field. And he said, I wonder if I could make a fastener. And it was called Velcro, you know, mm. and it was observed from, you know, the, the burrs sticking on his socks. And look, we can dial all the way back to Da Vinci. I, yeah. I enjoyed reading Leonardo Da Vinci's biography recently. I mean, the thing is like 900 pages. I mean, it's the big, I think it's the biggest book I've ever read, you know? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but I mean, the, the power of observation that we know Da Vinci had, it's like, let me observe this shell. Okay, that's how I made a spiral sur uh, sur uh, staircase. Let me observe birds. That's how we started making the winged, you know, apparatus. Let me observe the way shadows are really cast on a face and I'll paint. Yeah. differently you know so i'll i'll paint the last supper differently because i'm going to use light and shadow which was not popular in his uh, time and day yeah so all of these powers of observation uh really key now you bring up i the most famous design thinking but there's there's other firms that do this as well yeah. i had a chance to do one of these observational uh, exercises with a company called jump associates yes. and we literally got in a van you know, went to the mall. This is back when we all went to a mall. But, you know, went, <laughs> went to a mall and went into a store. And they kind of knew we were the mystery shoppers, but they didn't tell anybody. So the employees were kind of in on it. But we observed the shoppers. We observed their interactions with the employees. We observed how people walked to the checkout counters. We observed how, like, when you go to a clothing store, how you take it off the shelf, you unfold it, you hold it up to yourself. Well, what? why didn't do you have over and over? Why don't no. you have some that are already off the shelf and unfold? All yeah. of these things that lead to improving yeah. the experience. Yeah. Um, so. do, 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 wait, sorry, real quick. I, I want to share a quick comment. No. Mark, um, no. no, I've been no. thinking uh, a lot sometimes, right? It's like why people in the past were so wise, right? Like, yes, there's obviously a lot of wise people right now, but I'm like, you hear about these philosophers that like their wisdom stands the test of time. And I'm like, how, right? And honestly, the, the one and only conclusion that I've gotten to is that they had, they, they took the time to observe and to actually think, right? Instead of, Oh, I have this idea. Let me go as quick as I can and then grab my phone and, and distract myself, right? Like they didn't have those distractions. Their distraction was, oh, let me, like you said, right, Da Vinci, let me sit down and look at this nail and then build this 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 ladder, right? The spiral ladder. So I, I think what you mentioned is is key and it's probably something that people need to start seeing how they can fit that into their business, right? And it's that thinking time, that obs observation time. Because we just go, we just live in a, 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 a era that is like go, 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 right? React. Mm -hmm. it, it's more of reacting to things at all times. And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, right? Like a lot of times in our business, we're like, oh, we need to do this and we need to do that. And when we see progress and things, it's like when we sit down to talk and think and we actually take our time to develop these ideas. Is when we see like good progress, good momentum, and we get very excited. So I just want to invite people to actually set some time to think and observe how people are using your products. And then ask yourself, how can I make this 
better? How can I solve this problem? Yeah, my, I mean, my, yeah. my comment was along that route. It was about slowing down, right? Like, uh, personally, I'm very guilty of the fast pace, fat, a fa fact that uh, fast action <laughs> or fat action, <laughs> high pace, fat We're action. So fast. Uh, I can't even yeah, my clearly, talk. clearly. <laughs> so I'm moving quick and executing, right? And, and, and to a degree, just, you know, uh, learning quickly, it has helped us big time. But at the same time, the power of just sitting down and observing. And I want to relate it to, to publishing and something that we're doing in the Facebook group coming soon um, in the Contents Profit Facebook group is we're going to be discovering publishing frameworks, right? And this came out of a conversation that we had with uh, Chris Doe, right? And we asked him like, hey, dude, um, not, not, I didn't say dude, but like, hey, Chris, um, <laughs> what, you know, what was your publishing or like, how do you publish and what is your process? And what he said was like, if you sit down for a second and kind of observe, just sit down, go to my YouTube channel, observe the cadence. Like, when do I publish? How do I publish? What is the style of content that we put out there, right? This is a, these are people that, this company, The Future, have a million subscribers on YouTube, right? Like, they just cross that line. Incredible, right? And they're doing wonderful things. And it's like, it's, it's right there. It's in front of everybody, right? So you we talk with people creating content on their own cadences. Like, I want to be like Chris or like Gary Vee or like Mark, for example, right? And they're like, well, but Why? I want to be everywhere. And then there's there's no structure to it. And if we slow down and we sit down, and this is exactly, you know, personally what we did uh, to like kind of figure out this this game on how do we pre be present in a lot of places at the same time, right? With little to no time was, well, let's observe. What is it? Like, where are they creating all this information? Are they actually creating or are they multi-purposing? So, for example, we're going to take down, this is an exercise that we decided to do in front of our Facebook group live every week. Um, opening questions and it's like we're going to slow down and we're going to see these frameworks we're going to discover these frameworks so people have a structure on where they go because we've noticed in our own business that was an issue that was coming in conversations with not just our, our clients but with people that were interested right so we're like sounds good that's the solution so let's all slow down at the same time let's discover these frameworks let's identify what is your one so what you bring to the table is that 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 observe words like perfect this fits right in because everybody in their business should be doing this right if you have a business today and you're listening Go back. Like, what are the things that we're observing from our own clients? What are the things that we're observing from the people that come to us with their problems? How are they articulating those problems? And then we can turn around and help them in a very efficient way. So um, I, I love it, man. Thank you so much for bringing it up and breaking it down for us uh, so clearly. So for those listening, if you're interested in finding out the publishing frameworks and what we're going to be doing, Come to the group. Come hang out. Content is Profit Facebook group. So no. uh, thank you, Mark, for allowing me to do the plug. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. And, yeah, and you know, it's uh, funny that you say about uh, these things about uh, you know, philosophers, Fonzie, because, uh, you know, didn't we hear a guy recently, uh, maybe we were on the call together, but he said, you know, are you going to say anything today, a thought that could be carved in stone? You know, think about the great quotes. They're on monuments. You know, they're they're literally engraved in stone. Yeah. And if you're tweeting something today that's going to be forgotten in the next five seconds, okay, though that's not a deep thought. That's a tweet, and that's fine. But uh, you know, and you also think about and you ask, you know, why are some of these philosophers so remembered? And certainly, there's a time and space. You know, mm -hmm. why do we quote Abraham Lincoln all the time? And yet, James Buchanan, he was just the president, one president for Lincoln. Nobody ever quotes James Buchanan. <laughs> you know, it's like he's the most, uh, besides Polk, you know, he's the yeah. most invisible president. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, th these guys, did they have a deep thought? I don't know. Did they have a quotable inauguration address? Who knows? Yeah. But obviously the time and place or what they were saying just didn't resonate with people. Yeah. And then I love what you were saying, Luis, about all the different mediums, you know, that are available to publish your content. And I do laugh because going back years ago, I always called it the Martha Stewart model because <laughs> Martha Stewart was everywhere. And she had this wheel of multi channel content distribution. Obviously, a magazine and a TV show and yeah. some of these other things. But you started looking at this wheel. One of them was greeting cards. You know, one of them was blank motivational journals. And one of them, I mean, so all of these things that are off yeah. the beaten path. I'm curious if anybody's watching right now.
who says, you know, I, I want to be on YouTube and I want to go on Clubhouse. I want to do all these things. But what I really want to do is greeting cards. <laughs> I would be amazing. And you yeah. think about people who are doing poetry or think about people who are doing illustrations right now and saying, I need a way to get those out. Well, even e-greeting cards, there's a huge market for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, I've talked to singer songwriters and music producers who are like, yeah, you, you want to be on the radio, but really the radio is not what you think it is anymore. Why don't you want to get streamed on Spotify or why don't you want to have your own independent uh, label? I talked to a singer songwriter yesterday who's number three on the independent charts. Wow. And it's like, yeah. that's every bit as good as being number three on the iHeart radio yeah. app. And especially, you know, the uh, profitability of it. Uh, yeah. She's getting a better deal than the 0. 0.001 cent <laughs> that I think, you know, Taylor Swift gets Absolutely. on the radio. Well, that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think that's why she took away the power from the radio station and the, her labels and she's handling everything herself, right? It's the power back yeah. to the creator, right? What we talked yeah. about. Absolutely. I think, yeah, well, definitely understanding those meters is important. Sorry, Mark, I think you were going to say something. Oh, I was just saying, but this goes back to repurposing your content. Taylor Swift said, I want more control over my songs and my creation. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to re-record it. I'm going to own the studio. I'm going to own the masters. You know, I'm going to own the right to all these songs. And it's the same song she did, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it it is so important to definitely understand the mediums, understand where you want to be, what you want to do. That is that is key, right? And I'm just thinking, right, the other day we actually had um, someone send us a text of like an offer that they saw on, I don't even remember what it was. It was like the mm -hmm. AppSumo. I think it was like AppSumo where they do those deals, right? And it was about, mm -hmm. about content. It was like, get the templates, to all your copy, get the templates to all these things, like all this, a bunch of content stuff, right? In my mind, when I see that, right, we have a little war with that. And it is because it just goes along with what we were talking about of that quick win that people wants to like, is this actually helping you cultivate that creative mindset, right? That is actually going to help you in the long term. Or this is just a quick fix, a little band-aid that you want to use in your social media, right? And, and, and that's it, right? So for us, we changed the, a little perspective when it came to content. And it was, you know, we want to help people transition from being a consumer to being a creator. Like, we don't, like, do you need to multi-purpose your content and send it all, all the other places? We preach, yes, because that's what we do and it has worked for us. But guess what? You, for that content to be good, to be, you know, at its prime for multi-purposing, guess what? You need to do the thinking on the top. You need to be a great creator that knows how to translate your ideas from thoughts into words and put it into the world, right? So when I see these templates and all these quick win things, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I feel like we're just like numbing people's brains because now they're like, oh, People are just doing it for me, right? And now we see also like uh, uh, AI tools that are coming out where you just put two words and then they write a whole <laughs> bunch of things for you in like two seconds. And don't get me wrong. I think for certain things, it might be good, but I think there's a lot of people using it for the wrong reasons, right? Like, oh, I just want volume, quick, not meaningful, but guess what? Like, you need to grow as well as you're creating. Like when you tap into that creativity, you are growing yourself as well. And guess what? We have talked about this with Steve Larson. We've talked about this with Michael Faber here at the podcast. And they said, you don't achieve your goals. You grow to your goals, right? So if we're not growing and we're just like putting band-aids everywhere, something is going to break eventually, right? So I'm, I'm curious, Mark, how do we deal with this? How do we deal with helping pe people understand that they need to turn themselves into the creators, into that cre uh, person with creativity. And yeah, that they embrace the process of let me sit down and actually think about things. Yeah. Well, let me pick up on your, the two words that sound the same to people, but they're totally different words. One is creativity and one is creator. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the difference between that is you can say, well, I'm not all that creative, you know, or 
I don't feel like I have creativity as a trait or a description, right? But if you say I'm a creator, that's action. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> my my friend uh, Kirsten Goldie, who co-hosts another podcast with me, she always busts me on this. Mark, you're always looking for the bullet points and the action steps and the whatever. Well, I I happen to have a bias for action. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. To your point, it's like creators create, writers write, okay, S- songwriters sing. And they, you know, so let, let's just put the action behind what we're talking about. And uh, I guess one of those constellations or models that I was talking about before, I, I gained from an author and a professor and a mentor, Edward de Bono. And Edward de Bono, his most famous book is called The Six Thinking Hats. Mm-hmm. And he has a sequel to that, The Six Action Shoes. And these books have been fundamental and instrumental to break down the six steps to doing something. Here's how to think about it. Here's how to take action on it. So I don't need to read a blog or a book on the 101 ways to repurpose your content, you know, or the 101 blog ideas. You know, I I don't need that. I have six, you know, and so Edward de Bono helped me simplify that. Now, what you're also talking about is getting over some of these obstacles. I realized the other day I started writing something and I thought it was going to be a book and it's like 54 pages long. I'm like, well, that's not really a book. So the idea almost led me to the medium. Well, this is going to be a good ebook. You know, this is going to be a good paper. This is not a a paperback book. Nobody's going to pay $14.99 or $21.99 for this, but they, it might be a downloadable, it might be a free offer, it might be a lot of things that, that you've been talking about and a lot of your people uh, listening to this are going to want to create. Yeah. So sometimes the actual output can help you lead to, what do I do with this? Uh, I, I mm. love this point so much. Right? Thank you for bringing it up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a little t- time, t- time, time machine moment here when we first started the show, right? So um, everybody knows the story on why we started the show. If you don't, go back to the first few episodes is there. But basically, how it started was three live shows a week. That's it, right? We wanna we wanted to mimic what would be the minimum viable content on the podcast platform. So we, we talked about the minimum viable platform. So for us to execute very fast-paced frequently was three episodes a week. Mm-hmm. The first 20-ish episodes, it was just us. It was just us talking, right? Getting in front of the camera, getting comfortable, uh, making sure that the flow was good, uh, good enough for us to publish, right? Because we needed to to be out there sharing the message. Well, guess what? As soon as we started like that 20-ish episode, we're like, what if we bring some guests, right? This will be so awesome, to so fun to start having a conversation. So we transitioned from a solo show to a interview show and more of a more of a conversation show, right? So again, like you're saying, the medium started to evolve, like what we were saying. Guess what? After a few episodes, we're like, man, like these people that we're having conversations with, incredible lessons. So let's ask this one question at the end, right? Which, by the way, we'll ask you. We won't tell you what it is. But then... As soon as we started asking these questions, the answers were incredible. And we're like, wow, from these answers, what can we create that adds Mm -hmm. value to the people that listen to it? So now there's there's a backlog of ideas, of action points, depending on what market our guest is coming from, like sales, marketing, content, publishing, like a ton of stuff that is actionable items that people listening to the show can listen to. So that could potentially could be a mini ebook, a guide, a step-by-step, like what is it, right? And it's there for us to execute on, right? So, so but it's there, right? There's also another question that we asked at the very end of the shows, and that the purpose of that was born out of, hey man, like these people are having incredible success, they have incredible experiences, they've, they've done it for quite a while. Let's ask this one question that shows where would they be if X, Y, Z, right? Now that's a testimonial to what we're trying to do here because our testimonial is very powerful, is our own, of course, but when people see in others as well, they, they might be inclined to take action. So again, like the publishing, the, the, the publishing, the act of creating these these uh, videos, these interviews, these conversations started to evolve and then he gave us the mediums that you're saying to start plugging in this information I, I, I'll dare to say today in a creative way, 
right? And, and and that's that's incredible. And and I love this because I literally just had a conversation with somebody um, on Zoom, and they were like, they they're sometimes we're so focused on like one output, right? It's like the views and the thing and like the audience. And I'm like, okay, let's back up a little bit, right? Here's here's a, a very awesome leverage point for your content. You're having these incredible conversations. Here's what you can do on the front end, blah, blah, blah. Like all these benefits for the audience, but also what is the benefit on the back end? What is the relationship that we're building? What is the thing that, that we can build upon this one platform, right? So we just backed up and we saw those options and it was so awesome because you could see in their eyes like, oh my gosh, yes, we've been you know, ignoring these conversations or like you're saying in this case, I started to write something and then it evolved into this one thing that I, I thought it was not going to be, but it is now. And it's like, it now creates a new opportunity, right? It's not that we failed. It's just a new opportunity. That, and now how can we get it out there? So, ah, so many possibilities, so many options. And it all starts when we start to create, when we start putting those thoughts, when we're being, when we start being creator, like you're saying, right? That we start putting those thoughts into words, into a video, into a blog, into a page into paper um and i think that has been part of the transformation that we personally have have seen also through these mediums so it's, it's so powerful and we've seen so many people go through this journey as well and they're they're having a blast yeah so so yeah. it seems and, like and i just i just couldn't help but think about our conversation in the subaru in boise <laughs> as we were grabbing our black rock coffee yes uh, see see how i think about brands it's yeah. all about the brand yes uh, as you as you were heading up to Bogus Basin ski area. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but I think about this conversation, but we were, op you were open. I've been open to the serendipity or the, you know, coincidences or the surprises that you might have from these guests or from yeah. somebody, you know, you're just having a conversation with. I mean, I've had guests on my podcast. I thought, well, this will be a nice interview. You know, she wrote a biography of a rock group and won't that be interesting? Well, it turns out to be a great interview. Yeah. The rock group was America. They shared it on their page. It's been my highest listened to episode of the whole podcast because one Incredible. dot connected to another dot and boom. Yes. You know, so I had no idea. You, you've had guests like that. It's like, I have no idea where this is going for. Yeah. And instead of uh, targeting, I wish I could interview this person. Or I only wish I could be as good as this, you know, writer or this podcaster. You know, just do your thing. And then uh, some of that takes care of itself, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, how do people get there? How do I people get to yeah. taking care of their thing without, you know, comparing with themselves to others? Because there's a lot of that in, in today's world, right? I mean, oh my gosh, you, it's every minute of every day. Yeah. So so how, how, how can people move past that? You know, I, I have contemplated that question a lot. Um, and our mutual friend, Amber Furman, Asked me the same thing on her podcast. Um, you know, this imposter syndrome, how do you get over it? And I go, I, I don't know that I have gotten over it. I'm as big a people pleaser today as I was when I was eight years old. You know, I still want to get a gold star. I still am checking the likes too much. You know, <laughs> it's like all of these things. So, but, but I guess what I have found is that this for action, does seem to push past that yeah you know it's like well i posted something yesterday only three people liked it oh i'm so disappointed and then i'll post something tomorrow hundreds of people will like it i'm like what's the difference there was no difference i don't really you know and all of a sudden you realize it, it doesn't matter you yeah. know did you get a good thought today did you share something and so what if somebody didn't click a button at the bottom of your picture Yeah. That doesn't mean they didn't see it. That didn't mean they weren't moved by it. That didn't mean it, it didn't inspire them to take some action they wouldn't have taken otherwise. So I, I can't say that I'm any great, uh, you know, I've overcome my imposter syndrome. I probably live with it every day, just like everybody else does. Yeah. But, but if you have this desire to act and to share and to produce and to create, you know, it does help you push through it. We, yeah. I, 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 I just had an epiphany moment, Fonzie. Sorry. Let's hear it. Um, the, the invisible engagement, the invisible likes, the invisible impact, right? Like that, mm -hmm. uh, those are the things that, that we've shared too. And uh, we see them personally, right? We learn to see them as indicators, right? There's uh, we publish high volume. Like that's not a lie. We have a lot of stuff out there. 
and and what we see is like because we're present every day we see that so there's some some days that we receive comments like man like this really impacted me but guess what if the others weren't there then that person would probably didn't like wouldn't been able to see that piece and we wouldn't been able to create that impact right so that's the thing. How are we consistent? And and that's the invisible impact that we're talking about because you're present in their lives every single day. And last night I was driving home and I was like, man, like, because this conversation has come up lately, right? And I was thinking like, how can we make, how can we help people see that? Because for us, it was it was really painful to see that. It, it got to the point that we almost lost the entire business because we were so hung up on that, right? And, uh, and it was painful. And we we're like, we got to a moment that we accepted. They were like, hey, let's see what happens. Let's see if these are the indicators. And and the more we put our message out there, the more the more we share the message in a systematic, very smart way, obviously, on the back end so we can operate the business, right? We see these indicators and stuff. But in my head, I was like, how do we actually um, – and I'm curious. Like, this is the first time I, I we I share this experiment, right, even with Fonsi. So it would be like a simple ask. Go to your, like, for example, your favorite – Facebook page, your favorite like uh, person that you follow, right? On Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media, right? And then go to their profile and see how many likes have you given that person in the last nine posts, for example. Mm. It's probably not many. So, right. So it's like, okay, why am I so worried about getting likes if I don't give likes to that person, but I see their content and I'm impacted by them and I see them and I'm inspired, but I still don't hit the like button. That doesn't matter. Like there's a disconnect, right? Right. Like we don't need to be relying on that one action, but I'm still inspired. So I think that would be like a really cool experiment to go yeah. see, be like, what is somebody that really inspired me every single day? Like I could think, I could think of a ton of people, right? Everybody has been on the show with you, for example, or for example, um, I, one post that I saw today, Alex, right? Because I was uh, Alex Sharpen. Like I went back and I'm like, how many, like he's impacted me in many positive ways. And then I go back to his feed and I'm like, how many have I liked here? How many have I engaged with? Yeah. Zero. That, that's that's interesting. So today. It's so true. Yeah. I, I'm following like, again, I'm sorry to bring it up in the podcast, <laughs> but I've been obsessed with tennis lately. So I started following this coach that has like daily tips on tennis. Right. And I literally mm -hmm. go purposely on his profile to see the content and the past few days, I missed it. So today I was actually watching some and I was like, man, I forgot which one was the last one that I saw. So my thought was, you know, what my brother is saying right now, I was like, I, I love his content, but I've never hit like. I just watch it, right? I'm like, oh, this is awesome. But for me, it was like, huh, on Instagram, is I can see the little heart if I like it. So I'm just going to like it, kind of <laughs> to use it as a bookmark, right? I'm like, I'm yes, just going to like yes. it to know which one was the last that I saw. If you post a new one, I'm like, oh, okay, I haven't seen this one, <laughs> I right? Go back. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love this experiment. I I'm going to uh, steal that idea. That's another way I get creative, by the way. Yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, good. No, but you're absolutely correct. These invisible likes, you know, because I can tell you, we've all also had the experience. It's like, well, there, there's only seven, you know, little applause things on there. And if I put one on there, I'm going to be what? Exposed that I'm liking their thing every day. It's like, I don't want to be that guy, that stalker, <laughs> you know, that I, you know. And so you got to think. And I, I know for a fact, I think about podcasts, I think about book sales and all these things that can be tracked. But yeah. I've had way too many people say, hey, I love your podcast. To be able to look at the meter and say, I don't know how many people listen to this thing. There could be 14, there could be 14,000. I really have no idea. Yeah. You know, despite what they say about metrics and measurements and yeah. uh, and all these things, you really have no idea. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I love that idea of saying, hey, check yourself. Do you like everything that absolutely. you like? Yeah. Probably I, not. And this was born, and Fonzie, I know that you have a, a awesome comment yeah. coming. Uh, mm -hmm. And and we have we have some time left. But here, like very quick, like this came up because of um of a conversation I had. Somebody like they're like, hey, that we're super interested. Like I'm convinced. Like the, the conversation was like, I'm convinced. This is the thing I do. Like when we're talking about content momentum, right? Like I feel the pain. I have a team. Uh, and the comment is like, I wanna be Gary V, right? The Gary V of my industry, right? But still, but still the thing that's holding them a ton is those vanity metrics, right? So I'm like, look, here's here's an example. I'm, I'm gonna be super honest, super open with you today. 
there's obviously the system that, that has worked. We've proven that has worked in our world, right? So here's where we started and here's where we end. I haven't seen this data probably in like five months, right? And I was like, I just put myself on the spot right there because I'm confident that we're making impact. The business has seen it, right, on conversations and sales, and we're now able to help people that with uh, with their problems, right? But a collateral of that is actually people listening and pay attention to your content or to your message or to your what you put out there. So how do we measure it? Well, is it over time? So basically we see it as a, a show is a collection of assets. It's not just the audio, for example, right? So it's in different platforms. So guess what? We went in and live, we went into the data that we had for our social accounts, like my personal account, the business account, Facebook, Instagram, different things that we post all what we call the golden boulders, right? Guess what? In every single one, there was growth, right? And I'm like, this is a collateral of just being consistent. And let me tell you, the only thing that we did here was publish consistently over a long period of time. And guess what? Facebook was up by like 200%. Instagram was up by like 50%. My personal Instagram, which by the way, this is not how my personal Instagram started. My personal Instagram started by me and now we publish everything on the show there. It didn't see a dip. Like it just continued to grow, right? So it was just consistency. And I'm like, look, if this doesn't do it, does it do it for you? Like, I don't know what it is because you're already convinced. And that's the thing. And it's like, so that was the conversation that triggered that exercise, right? It's like, why? Why are we so focused on that? And then it becomes an internal problem, right? That, that as we publish, that becomes less and less. But we have to f- do the action and continue to learn on that. Like you've been saying, like, can we be that creator? Can we take action and be that creator? And everything's going to be sorted out, like you just said. So, oh, man, Mari, thank you so much. This was so good uh, distilling these ideas with you. Uh, oh, so so awesome. I don't know, Fonzie, yeah. do you have any other comments? Well, I, I was going to try to transition to the closing part of it. You know, Mark, we're going to have to definitely do a, a, <laughs> a part two. I'm loving this conversation oh, yeah. on creativity. Part two, three, and four. So we're just Sa- going to keep the love going. Sounds Yay. good. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, but I wanted to kind of close with a phrase, right? I mean, you refer to Picasso quite a few times today and you said, I stole that idea, right? That's a way I get ideas. And it's this famous phrase that I'm sure a lot of people know is good artist copy, great artist steal, right? And it's just Amen. a great way to start tapping into creativity, right? To steal these ideas and then make them your own, make them your own. So, Mark, thank you so much. Um, before we, we, you know, close this episode, we have a few questions to ask you. First of all is what is an action point that we can leave people with on how they can get more creative Uh, or how can they build their creativity? That's right. Uh, One word, observe. So if you're sitting at your desk, uh, if you're driving in your car, if you're walking down the street, riding your bike, whatever you're doing, and you're saying, I just don't know what to write about. I don't, I need a new idea. I need a new something. Observe, look around. Mm. And you're going to say, I, I never thought of that. I never thought of advertising on bus benches, you know, because yeah. they're invisible to you, you know, until you observe them, whatever the case is. Absolutely. Observe. I love it. Thank you so much, Mark. I love that one. Observe people, open your eyes and look everywhere. <laughs> and with intention, intentionally is, is very important. And Mark, the next question is, and probably one of our favorite questions every, all the time that we ask it is, where would you be if you didn't publish? My goodness. If I didn't publish, first of all, I, I would be in this uh, lonely place this cocoon of, you know, I've got all these ideas. I have no way of getting them out. There's not enough meetings. There's not enough phone calls. There's not enough, you know, places to, uh, to go and mm-hmm. get, share, you know, whatever. Uh, exchange, because I love the exchange, not just publishing. You know, I hope to get uh, information back. So I, where physically, I don't know, but where emotionally, I would just be really lonely and pent up and frustrated. Wow. Thank, Thank you so much. I think that, the, yeah, that put things into perspective. I think I, I, I honestly feel a lot of people feel like that. They don't know yet what is the solution. 
And this episode is the solution, right? <laughs> yeah. This episode of creativity totally. Totally. is the, is the solution to that problem. So yeah. thank you so much, Mark, for sharing yeah. that. Yeah, Mark, we're reflecting what you just, you just said. I'm going back to some hard experiences that we've had in you know through the journey, right? And when we started the show, there's up and downs as always, right? And publishing has always been that outlet. Like it, whether that's a show or an interview or a conversation with people like you has always been an incredible outlet because then we can we can share, we can experience, we can see the other side too. And then when we hop off those conversations, it's it's incredible. It's like a, a, a like a ball of energy just hit our chest and we're like, let's keep going, right? So and, and I think that's some of the things that, that we gotta do and we've shared it here. It's like that's the reason we do the show three times a week, right? Yeah, the marketing aspect, absolutely, it will, it does help. But the main reason is to be able to experience that every single day and continue to grow. Absolutely, Mark. Big time. Big so time. before we close this up, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Yeah, well, two great places. Uh, one, my website. It's Mark hyphen. So Mark with the dash Stinson S T I N S O N dot com. And you'll see books, you'll see audio programs, you'll see some of the workshops I do. So it's all there on the website. And then I love to connect with people on LinkedIn. Hey, the more the merrier. Uh, I, I was that guy back in, I don't even know when LinkedIn was invented, but I know I was there. Uh, it's like <laughs> landing on the moon. You know, where were you when the man landed on the moon kind of a feeling? And uh, I was an early adopter of LinkedIn and loved it ever since. Uh, but my handle is Stinson Mark. So just uh, get that reversed. But if you look up me on LinkedIn, you'll you'll be sure to find me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. And just for those listening, if you're interested to connect in connecting with Mark, which you should and you, you're going to do it, we are 100% sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. an <laughs> it's an order. It's an order. Scroll, <laughs> just scroll, do it. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> scroll down in the description. We're going to leave all the links to his website to his LinkedIn, uh, to his Facebook, to his house. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mark. We're not gonna leave. We're not gonna leave your house <laughs> to address. His, in to there. his show. <laughs> to his show. Oh, yeah. Look at your world of creativity. I love just it. Just the coffee shop on the corner. The coffee yes, shop. Close, the coffee close shop. to my house, but not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But yeah, if you guys are interested in connecting with Mark, just scroll down a little bit, and you're gonna find all his information in there. Mark. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was absolutely amazing. Yeah, this was so, so such a fun conversation, man. Exactly what we needed. Thank you for allowing us to share our thoughts as well and uh, and distill these ideas because we I think we went through the process with you observing, you know, putting something out there and see what happened, see what the reaction was. I love uh, the, that a new concept was born today, the invisible likes, the, in, the invisible engagement and what that means. So thank you, Mark, for allowing us the opportunity to share those ideas with you. Any Any last thoughts that you want to share with us or the audience? No, it's all fantastic. And uh, let's just keep uh, keep observing and just let your creativity shine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mark. Guys, with Ro that rock said. Rock and roll. Yeah. Rock and roll. Let's go, rock and roll. <laughs> with that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe and follow button on social media at Biz Bros Co. That is right. And if you feel a little bit more creative after today's conversation with Mark, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.